Thanks, Deputy Speaker. De Deputy Speaker, the Albanese government has no tolerance for corruption of any kind, whether in the public sector or the private sector. Since coming to office just over a year ago, we have walked the walk. We have got on with the job through action. With the support of this parliament, we are restoring integrity, honesty and accountability to government with the commencement of the National Anti-Corruption Commission. During the 2022 federal election, Australians were clear. They wanted a National Anti-Corruption Commission watchdog and they wanted a government that they could trust. Indeed, Deputy Speaker, the electors of my electorate in Bean were also very clear in wanting the National Anti-Corruption Commission, many of them spending much of their careers in public administration. They clearly put integrity on the ballot and they voted accordingly. Well, Deputy Speaker, the measures in the Crimes Legislation Amendment Combating Foreign Bribery Bill 2023 address challenges with detecting, investigating and prosecuting foreign bribery in Australia. These measures build on our work to date in tackling corruption. Foreign bribery is another form of corruption and it's an insidious problem across the world. Bribery, in particular, harms investment and economic growth. It distorts markets, artificially inflates prices and leads to substandard pro products being procured. Further, it undermines efforts against poverty and disease and facilitates serious transnational crimes. Bribery corrodes good governance and contributes to social and economic inequality in local communities where it occurs. It is rightly the business of this parliament to be addressing these issues. Thankfully, Australia is party to a number of international instruments aimed at fighting corruption, including bribery. These include the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organised Crime, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, and the, and the Convention on Combating Bribery of Foreign Public Officials in International Business Transactions. In addition, Australia is also engaged in the following regional and international forums and, and initiatives. The G20 Anti-Corruption Working Group, the OECD Working Group on Bribery in International Business Transactions, the Anti-Corruption and Transparency Experts Working Group, and the ADB OECD Anti-Corruption Initiative for Asia Pacific. Deputy Speaker, undetected and unpunished, bribery undermines the reputation of all Australian businesses and negatively impacts business and government relations. The Australian government has a zero tolerance policy in relation to foreign bribery and supports ethical business practices. So this bill is both welcome and overdue. Bribery by its very nature, is incredibly difficult to investigate and prosecute. It is both opaque and sophisticated. Sadly, as other speakers have already said, there have been relatively few foreign bribery prosecutions in Australia. Because the current Foreign Bribery Defence in Division 70 of the Commonwealth Criminal Code has been overly prescriptive and difficult to use. This bill seeks to address this issue. It does this by replacing the existing foreign bribery offence with a new carefully developed offence. For example, the prosecution needs to show that both the bribe and the business advantage were not legitimately due. This wording presents difficulties for prosecutors, so be replaced with improperly influencing a foreign public official. Deputy Speaker, this bill also broadens the scope of of the foreign bribery offence, so that it will now capture bribery conducted to obtain personal advantage. This is because experience shows that bribes can include a range of benefits, including personal honours and the processing of visa or immigration requests, or in relation to reducing personal tax liability. Further, this bill seeks to prevent foreign bribery in the first place by implementing a new indictable corporate offence. This is in order to overcome the problem of companies that willfully choose to turn a blind eye to misconduct by their employees. These provisions will apply to companies where an associate bribes a foreign public official for the profit or gain of the corporation. Importantly, the offence would not apply if the body corporate was able to demonstrate that it had, had adequate procedures in place to prevent the bribe in the first instance. In a positive sense, 
This new provision will provide an incentive to companies to be proactive towards preventing bribery. I know many Australian companies already have rigorous procedures in place to combat primary bribery, and I, and I commend them on this. To assist those companies that may not have the necessary procedures in place, guidance material on what constitutes adequate procedures will be produced. Deputy Speaker, the measures in this bill may sound very familiar to those opposite. That's because they're virtually identical to the amendments introduced by those opposite in 2017 and then reintroduced in 2019. Both times, under the, under the watch of those opposite, those bills were allowed to lapse, failing to even be debated. The previous government had years to bring the measures forward for debate and to pass them. They didn't. On these matters of corruption and bribery, Deputy Speaker, there can be no leeway. We must be vigilant. The stakes are too high. Australia's international reputation for world-leading corporate governance, including anti-bribery provisions, must be protected. And this bill does that. Indeed, indeed, Deputy Speaker, the fact that this bill will help this government to crack down on bribes that, that are built into seemingly legitimate con con contractual arrangements is a, is a particular positive. What makes this bill particularly critical? Our recent reports of millions of tax day, taxpayer dollars allegedly being paid to foreign officials through suspicious contracts between private companies and subcontractors engaged by the Department of Home Affairs on Nauru and in Pap Papua New Guinea. These are allegations of suspicious contracts during the time when the now Leader of the Opposition was the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection and the Minister for Home Affairs. He was in charge. He knew what was, go was going on, one would assume. Reports suggest that the Department of Home Affairs may have disregarded what was effectively a bribe disguised as a legitimate contractual arrangement. This happened, as I said, when the now Leader of the Opposition was the Minister for Home Affairs. He had responsibility. Furthermore, when the now Leader of the, of the Opposition was in his role as the Minister for Home Affairs, he knew that his department had a multi-million dollar regional processing contract with a man who had been charged by the AFP with foreign bribery. Even if the Leader of the Opposition claims that he did not know about the bribery at the time, these contracts became a matter of public record in September 2018. In September 2018, Mr Bojani, who was associated with Radiance International, was charged by the AFP for foreign bribery. And in August 2020, he was convicted after pleading guilty. The department continued to pay Mr Bajani millions of taxpayer dollars and extended contracts with his company during this period. Disgraceful indeed. One of the companies related to suspicious contracts in Nauru was Canstruct International. A contract is awarded to this company to provide welfare and garrison services on Nauru, despite not having any experience of providing either of these services to vulnerable people. The contract between the department and Canstruct International was extended many times without a competitive tender. This is a shelf company with no relevant experience getting a $1.8 billion contract without a competitive tender from the former government. We also know that the Leader of the Opposition knows this company very well. Executives of Canstruct enjoyed exclusive access to the now Leader of the Opposition during this period. These sorts of arrangements are exactly what this government intends to target through amendments to this bill. <laughs> Deputy Speaker, I will say that the corporates in this case, in respect to this bill, will be protected where they can show that they have followed adequate procedures, that those, that those are in place to prevent foreign bribery by an associate. So we're going to, as I said before, we're going to have guidance material for the corporations. They can follow those guidance materials and then make sure that they're above reproach. The UK has utilised a similar offence to prosecute companies in a few cases of foreign bribery. These are reforms that ensure that a company cannot simply ignore bribery conducted by its employees or, contract or contractors where it results in benefits for their business. They cannot pretend that it's business as usual. Companies can currently avoid criminal liability under existing offences in the Criminal Code, even if they know or, or strongly suspect foreign bribery is occurring. These companies have been able to remain willfully blind to the activities of their associates, including through the use of third-party agents located offshore. 
These reforms will enable bribery by an associate of a corporation to trigger corporate liability. The, the reforms also create a new offence. That, that's certainly true for corporations that fail to prevent foreign bribery. The maximum penalty will be $27.5 million or higher. Companies, companies can also be held directly liable for the foreign bribery activities of their employees, external contractors, agents and subsidiaries, unless a business can demonstrate they had adequate procedures in place. That is eminently fair, Deputy Speaker. You are responsible as an entity for the operations that you are conducting as a corporate entity. These reforms are about ensuring accountability, something that was very far away from the minds of the opposition when they were in government with respect to sitting on this bill and doing nothing for so many years. We know that prosecuting for foreign bribery is currently so challenging. As I said earlier, that's, that's why we are making the changes uh, to the definitions in Division 70 of the Commonwealth Criminal Code. As part of this bill, the existing foreign bribery offence will be replaced to ensure that it better captures typical cases of foreign bribery identified by law enforcement. Prosecutors currently need to show that both the bribe and the business advantage sought were not legitimately due, which is difficult in cases where bribes are dis disguised as legitimate payments. This bill replaces the need for this and instead requires prosecutors to demonstrate the improper influencing of a foreign public official. It also broadens the scope of the foreign bribery offence to include bribery conducted that involves a personal advantage, not just a business advantage. It modifies the definition of foreign public official to include candidates for public office, quite rightly. The bill also introduces a new corporate offence of failure to prevent foreign bribery. This relates to cases where an associate of a body corporate has committed bribery for the benefit of the body, of the body corporate. Deputy Speaker, the Albanese government is taking action on foreign bribery by Australian companies after 10 years of nothing happening. This is about accountability and the value of accountability, which we hold high. This is about having no tolerance for corruption. That is why we are pushing ahead with this bill, despite the empty protestations of some of the speakers opposite and the, and the do-nothing attitude that was emblematic of the opposition when they were in government. It's time for us to take up action, Deputy Speaker. It's time for us to pass this bill through the House.